One of the most exciting prospects in exploring the solar system is the potential of someday drilling into ice shell moons with subsurface oceans, such as at Europa and Enceladus. At this point, we are reasonably certain that they host subsurface oceans, but we can't say much else. But what we can do is look at all of the strange things we've discovered within Earth's oceans, and then in turn, that allows us to dream of all of the strange mysteries that might be lurking in the solar system's ice shell oceans. The Earth's oceans have revealed strange mysteries. The more in detail we go with the study of them, the stranger they get. If life exists at places like Enceladus or Europa, it could be the same situation. So here are 10 odd phenomena of Earth's oceans that hint at the mysteries we might someday find in the depths of the outer solar system's liquid water oceans. Number 10. The Green Flash There are many odd phenomena that happen on this planet that not very many people see, but are proven to exist. This can range from mirages to the Gegenschein, which I have personally witnessed as an amateur astronomer, where you see a spike of light just before dawn stretching across the sky that is caused by the sun glinting off of dust in the solar system. But one odd phenomenon is particularly interesting because it's usually, but not always, seen on beaches. It's the green flash, and it's an optical phenomenon where observers see a distinctly green flash right at the moment the sun rises or sets on the horizon. It's very transient, meaning that it only appears for a second or two as the sun just drops below the horizon. This is a phenomenon of Earth's atmosphere, where when the conditions are just right, the atmosphere refracts the sun's light into different colors, in this case green, and there are different types of green flashes known. So it's really a group of related phenomena, rather than just one. You may or may not see this at sunset or sunrise on a beach or other flat area, where you can see the sun dip below the horizon, but people do, and it's actually sort of poetic because our sun really should be classed as a green giant instead of a yellow dwarf. It only looks yellow because of the Earth's atmosphere. In space, it's white, and it's not really a small star. It's significantly larger than most stars in the universe. And in space, it appears white, but if you analyze the light from it, it actually emits most strongly in green light. So perhaps it's poetic for it to have a green flash here on Earth. And that leads to a bonus oddity. So the sun emits brightly in green. You'd think that living things that take advantage of the visible spectrum of light would take advantage of all that green light. But in fact, not so much. The plants appear green, by and large, because they were reflecting and getting rid of some of the green light. Number 9. The Largest Animal we often think of the distant geologic past as a time of huge animals. Gigantic dinosaurs once roamed the earth that dwarf elephants, and many things in the fossil record seem bigger than their modern counterparts. But this isn't always the case, and in fact the largest creature ever to evolve on this world that we know of isn't a dinosaur, and it isn't extinct. Barring the fungus world, it's actually the blue whale, and while the species is endangered, they're still around and seem to be recovering to some degree from intense whaling that dropped their numbers to dangerously low levels. To compare, blue whales can reach lengths of 100 feet. Some dinosaurs exceeded this, but only by being very spindly and long, whereas a blue whale is bulky due to its weight, being supported by water. A blue whale can weigh 200 tons, which is over 30 elephants worth of animal requiring up to 4 tons of krill each day for food. But oddly, blue whales also have another odd distinction. Other than humans with our technology, they are also the loudest animals on Earth, beating out a jet engine in volume. But underwater, where their low-frequency whale song can be heard for hundreds of miles, in order to communicate with other blue whales. Number 8. Everest is not the tallest mountain. At 29,031 feet or 8,848 meters, majestic Mount Everest is often pointed to as the highest point on Earth, the peak elevation for this planet. But that actually depends on how you measure it. And in fact, highest and tallest are two different things. Everest is measured as height above sea level, but if you use different criteria, there are mountains that beat it on Earth. The record holder so far, as tallness goes, is Mauna Kea in Hawaii. It's less than half of Everest's height above sea level, 
only 4,205 meters or 13,796 feet, but if you measure it from its base on the ocean floor, it beats Everest. This is actually a measurement called dry prominence, and if you measure Mauna Kea from that point, it handily beats Everest, coming in at 30,610 feet or about 500 meters taller than Everest. This is actually a somewhat unfair comparison, however, as Everest has no water around it, so its dry prominence is its height above sea level. The dormant volcano Mauna Kea, however, is almost entirely submerged. Put them on an equal footing, as it were, and Mauna Kea wins. But even that is somewhat misleading, as there is another candidate. Ecuador's Mount Chimborazo actually wins on another scale. It actually sticks out further from the average surface of the Earth more than any other mountain, and it's tiny in comparison. It's only two-thirds the height of Everest. But what's different here is that this mountain is near the equator, where the Earth bulges out due to its rotation, meaning that standing on this mountain is the furthest point you can get on the surface of the planet to the very center of the Earth. It's all in how you measure it. As to how a sea mount can outdo Mount Everest, this is actually something to do with the makeup of the Earth's crust. Oceanic crust is quite simply stronger and denser, but it's also a lot thinner. At the same time though, it's carrying the weight of water mostly. Whereas Everest and the Himalayas in general are huge heavy mountains sitting on very thick heavy crust. As a result, sea mounts can be a bit more favored as far as prominence. But in the end, we've got nothing on Mars. There, the volcano Olympus Mons extends 70,000 feet, or 21 kilometers, with a base the size of the state of Arizona. Lower gravity and a whole lot of volcanism has its advantages, as far as mountain building goes. Number 7. The Glowing Ocean There are many forms of bioluminescence on Earth, ranging from simple fireflies to jellyfish. This is an interesting phenomenon when trying to imagine what exoplanets might be like, for example, a tidally locked exoplanet within the habitable zone of a red dwarf, where you have a twilight area with some light, but also convecting ocean currents carrying warm water from one side of the planet to the dark side, this would seem like a place well suited for bioluminescence. And indeed, so would ice shell moons like Europa and Enceladus. It could be that we in fact live in a largely bioluminescent universe. And we see bioluminescence in Earth's oceans commonly especially with luminous microorganisms emitting eerie blue light and breaking waves at night. But there's one type of bioluminescence that is still somewhat mysterious, and not only has been reported by seafarers for centuries, but it can also be seen from space. It's called Muriel, or Milky Sea's effect. What happens is enormous areas of the surface of the sea can glow dimly. This is thousands of square kilometers, typically an eerie blue. Mariners report passing through these areas at night, describing them as extending for miles. This was a total mystery until 2005, when satellite photography caught the glow, which tends to concentrate in the Indian Ocean for unknown reasons. The effect is almost certainly due to dinoflagellates or other bioluminescent organisms, and there are a number of candidates, so it may be that the phenomenon can be caused by a number of different organisms. Does the universe at large host planets with glowing oceans? Number 6. Fata Morgana One of the strangest visual phenomena this planet can show us is that of the Fata Morgana. This is a type of mirage, but quite a bit more impressive than the mirages that we see on roads when driving on hot pavement. I've actually seen this phenomena quite distantly off the east coast of the US, where you could clearly see a square, probably a building on shore, but it was seemingly hanging in mid-air near the horizon. This is an optical phenomenon of the atmosphere. The light reflected from the object under the right conditions, where the rays of light pass through layers of air at different temperatures, produces the effect. These layers of cooler versus warmer air can be very defined, and as a result can produce an optical effect. It doesn't just happen over water, it can happen in deserts, Antarctica, on shore, or anywhere where the right conditions can be met, even on aircraft. Usually they show the object inverted, but also often show multiple stacked images of the object that morph and change as the air moves. While today we have a fully scientific explanation for these types of mirages, there was a time when we didn't, and they're sometimes interpreted as fairy castles, witchcraft, and even unknown land masses. 
There have been instances where islands were reported and even mapped that simply don't exist, and it's entirely possible that the origins of these stories were Fata Morganas, and not just of distant land, but also icebergs. There are many candidates for these kinds of false islands, both ancient and more modern. One is High Brazil, said to be an island off the coast of Ireland that only appears every few years, which sounds suspiciously like this phenomenon. Some more modern examples during the age of Arctic exploration where a number of islands that do not appear to exist were reported. These range from Senekoff Island, which was probably a Fata Morgana of Bennett Island, and Sir John Ross's 1818 expedition to search for the Northwest Passage saw him observe a mountain range and name it after his patron and government, all against the protestation of his officers who all knew it was a mirage. That affair turned out to not be very good for Ross's future funding, and there were a number of cases of this effect. Wishful thinking in a Fata Morgana has led to a number of discoveries of islands that simply aren't there. But there's one last strange thing about Fata Morganas. The French government determined that while optical Fata Morganas happen relatively rarely, radar mirages of a similar nature are much more common. Radar sometimes sees things that aren't there. Number 5. The Anomalies of Salt Perhaps Earth's key feature as a planet is its very extensive and very salty oceans. In addition to that source of salt, we also have salt flats, salt mines, beautiful halite crystals, and so on. To some degree, we still carry the oceans around with us in our slightly saline bloodstream. And salt as a part of a diet is common to all humans. Though it's known that some hunters and gatherers in the past consumed very low amounts of sodium, but the prevalence of salt in the oceans has led to some rather odd natural occurrences. One of these are brine pools. This rare phenomenon can best be described as a lake on the ocean floor, where you have water so dense and saturated with salt that it can't mix with the rest of the ocean. It also becomes toxic for most forms of life on Earth, other than extreme salt lovers. These things are weird. They can really look like cloudy lakes on the ocean floor separate from the surrounding water and can actually preserve sedimentary information for a very long time in a pristine state. Oddly enough, some of them can even act like traps, where sharks and other marine predators can just dip in and grab unlucky creatures that end up in the deadly water. Another is a completely different phenomenon that doesn't represent the concentration of salt, rather the moving of it. For people interested in past buried impact craters on Earth, there is one phenomenon that can seriously cloud the issue. Salt can form geologic structures, and indeed behaves in a certain very dynamic way. One way is if salt mobility geologically undermines rock, and can cause a kind of sinkhole on the ocean floor. There are several candidates for asteroid craters that may in fact simply be due to this process, including the Silver Pit Crater off the coast of the UK, which is almost certainly salt rather than meteorite related. It can sometimes be harder to determine an actual impact crater as opposed to a geologically created feature than you might imagine. Number 4. Spain's Really Bad Luck The ocean floor is littered with evidence of human bad luck. Countless shipwrecks found throughout all periods of human navigation of the seas are a testament to accidents and disasters. From amphora-laden ships from the ancient world, still preserving the arranged look of racks of containers once filled with olive oil or wine, to more modern tragedies such as the Titanic, or the many wrecks in the Pacific as a result of the Second World War. But for all our modern safety and weather prediction capabilities, we still face some of the threats at sea that have plagued mariners since the beginning. Storms. Out of the world's historical empires, one in particular seemed to have particularly bad luck with storms, in particular hurricanes. This was that of Spain, and they were in the unlucky position of having to cross a very hurricane-prone area that remains so to this day, the Florida coast, Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. They had to do this near hurricane season with no real weather reports, all while having to defend their fleets during the crossing back to Europe. These fleets were known as plate fleets, and annually transported silver, gold, and other valuable objects back to Spain. These fleets would typically assemble at Havana under the protection of armed galleons, and then proceed up the east coast of Florida, right past Cape Canaveral, 
until they hit winds that would take them back to Europe. This was sometimes a recipe for disaster. The first loss happened in 1554. Four ships had to set sail without an escort traveling from Mexico to Havana with about 300 passengers and a load of silver and gold. They almost reached their destination, but a hurricane hit and blew them west to the Gulf Coast of Texas, where three ships were wrecked. Some of the passengers survived, only to be killed by natives, and few ultimately survived the disaster. Another happened in 1622, between the Marquesas Key and the Dry Tortugas off the southwest coast of Florida, where a number of ships from a treasure fleet were sunk during a hurricane, including the famous Atocha. Another incident was the loss of a large number of ships that were driven into what is now the Florida Space Coast in 1715, some within sight of Cape Canaveral. Enormous amounts of silver and gold coins have been recovered from these wrecks, and indeed coins still wash up on the beach. A similar incident happened in 1733 in the Florida Keys, though here it was a weaker hurricane, and some of the ships were refloated, and there were many survivors, and a mostly successful salvage operation was carried out at the time. But perhaps the strangest story was the loss of a ship called the El Cazador. This was not due to a storm, as far as anyone knows, but simply disappeared in 1784. The ship was loaded down with gold and silver currency sent from Mexico to New Orleans. The local economy was dependent on fiat paper money and wasn't doing well, so the Spanish crown sent a load of hard currency to the area. The king entrusted the mission to his most experienced and trusted captain, and the ship set sail and was never heard from again. That was until a fishing trawler, oddly known as the Mistake, pulled up silver coins with its net. As to what exactly happened to the ship to cause its loss is unknown, but it goes to show that the oceans of the world hold many mysteries indeed. Number 3. The Black Sea and Oxic Zone The Black Sea is among the more unique bodies of water on planet Earth. Due to the fact that the upper 10% of oxygenated water does not mix with the lower roughly 90% of the rest of the water which is depleted of oxygen, known as an anoxic or dead zone. Most life can't survive in the lower layers, and as a result, things can be preserved in the Black Sea that cannot in the nearby Mediterranean Sea. This means that historic shipwrecks dating back to ancient times litter the floor of the Black Sea and are often in a very high state of preservation with even their wood surviving. Essentially, the wrecks can have their iron fastenings corrode, but all other parts survive, including rigging and wood, leaving jigsaw puzzle wrecks, often with masts, still standing, that preserve all aspects of maritime life and trade going back to the Greeks and Romans and potentially before. Wrecks dating from the Byzantine and Ottoman periods have already been found fully intact, and there's even a chance that the remains of their crews might be equally well preserved under the silt. Marine archaeology in the Black Sea has only just begun, but holds great promise for studying navigation in the ancient world potentially even preserving things like the famous Antithicara mechanism in a more complete form, or it's even conceivable that something like a war galley might be found, or various other ships that we have little preserved information from in the modern age. But the Black Sea is not the only place this happens. Parts of the Baltic Sea are too cold for wood-boring worms that normally reduce wooden shipwrecks to ruins, allowing for a further trove of ships, ranging from warships to merchant ships from the medieval period onward. The best archaeological sites in the seas have yet to be fully explored, and discoveries on level with those of Tutankhamun's tomb await to be found. Number 2. The 52 Hertz Whale The ocean is full of very odd sounds, many of them geologic or related to ice, that are picked up by hydrophones worldwide. Even more, and an increasing problem, are man-made by shipping, sonar, and so on. But there are also biological sounds, and in particular those of the various species of whales, that can sometimes be picked up at great distances as they migrate. But there have been mysteries, and one in particular is a whale that exhibits calls at a very unusual frequency for a whale, 52 hertz. This is significantly higher than other whale species that migrate with a similar pattern that this whale does such as the blue whale which calls at frequencies between 10 and 39 hertz, and the fin whale which calls at about 20 hertz. This whale has intermittently been detected for decades, 
Those slight changes in frequency suggest that when it was first heard, it was not yet matured, and has since. This whale, however, does not migrate exactly like other known species of whale, though it does seasonally move from off the coast of Alaska to off the coast of California. It's thought that this whale must either have a deformation of some sort, or is a hybrid of two different whale species, of which there have been examples in the field of whales that do seem to be hybrids. Often termed the loneliest whale, it doesn't seem to be able to interact with either blue or fin whales, but that might not be an accurate description. Since 2010, there seems to be a second example of a 52 Hz whale being detected, apparently nearby the original when it calls. Something interesting is happening in the oceans indeed. Number 1. Point Nemo People often think of Antarctica as the most isolated point on Earth, very difficult to get to and visited by few. But the reality is that while that may be true for land, there is one oceanic area of Earth that sees far less people. There is one general area on Earth that is so isolated that in effect it's known as a pole of inaccessibility, or more popularly, Point Nemo. In a nutshell, it's the furthest point in the ocean located from any coast. Located in the South Pacific Ocean, if you fell off a boat at Point Nemo and had to swim to shore, you would be the furthest from a shore that's possible on planet Earth. The closest land at this point is 2,688 kilometers or 1,670 miles away. And even then, the choices aren't great. At that distance are the sparsely populated Pitcairn Islands of Mutiny on the Bounty fame, the Easter Islands, and uninhabited islands off the coast of Antarctica. In other words, your choices are places that are difficult to travel to as it is. If you are sitting on a boat at Point Nemo, the closest human life to you usually is going to be the astronauts on the International Space Station as they pass overhead. One weird oddity is that before Point Nemo was identified and named geographically, it was an area of ocean H.P. Lovecraft chose as the location of Cthulhu City of Relia. Point Nemo is also a place to avoid for its lack of maritime traffic so much so that it's referred to as the spacecraft graveyard because it's a favored location for deorbiting satellites. And indeed, it's the location the International Space Station will crash into around 2031. The other odd thing about this area is that it's relatively lifeless, one of the most lifeless places on Earth. This is because of a lack of nutrients, caused by it getting so little nutrients from coastal runoff water. Point Nemo may indeed be the most alien landscape on Earth, a place in this world that doesn't particularly teem with life, but rather where it has a foothold, but not the same grip it does elsewhere. But the overall diversity of wonders and mystery we find in our oceans only sets the table for what we're going to find as we explore the solar system's ice shell moons. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently eyeing the whales and dolphins suspiciously, mammals that have forsaken land. That strikes me as dubious in a fifth column sort of way. They've sold us out to the fish, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.